Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look <clears throat> at my throat frogs. No, I'm just kidding. We take a look at headlines. We take a look at what's going on in our city, our state, our country. We take a look at what you're thinking of, what you want to know, how you want to enjoy the city that we call home, Puerto Vallarta, in the most comprehensive way as a community of English-speaking locals. This is what we do, and today is Monday, December 13, and we have all kinds of interesting news and a couple of exercises that will require um, your participation through comments. So I think it's going to be very, very fun, or at least interesting. At least that's what we hope to aim for. I hope everyone were able to, I, I thought everyone was able to enjoy a beautiful weekend. It was beautiful this weekend out and about. I had a really mellow weekend myself, although I went to the movies on Saturday, went to see West Side Story, and it was amazing. It was so totally deserving of the big screen treatment. Anyhow, as always, if you have something really important that you wish to say during the broadcast, you wish for a comment, a reaction, um, just write the letter Q in your comment. That way we will be able to distinguish it from all the other conversation that goes on. And of course, if you are new, if this is the first time you're joining us, we'd love to welcome you. And we can do that if you write the word new in your comment or suggestion. Let us dive into the news and we'll take it from there. We start with sad news. Vicente Fernandez, Mexico's most accomplished and beloved uh, ranchero singer, has died at age 81 after being in critical care since last August when he had an accident at home and had to be hospitalized. Vicente Fernandez was indeed bigger than life and most revered here in, this, in, in Mexico and most certainly in our state. He was from Jalisco, his home state. And... Um, he left behind a huge legacy of over 80 recorded albums, participation in more than 25 Mexican films. And throughout his career, which began in the 1970s, he received three Grammy Awards, eight Latin Grammy Awards, and has a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Um, you probably know some of his hits. You just never knew it was songs sung by Vicente Fernandez. And you can learn more about him, his personal and professional accomplishments, as well as reactions to his passing from other music personalities through this report, which was uh, produced by PBS in English. Now, <clears throat> yesterday was the day in which we commemorate Our Lady of Guadalupe, and locals got a little crazy despite the mandates not to attend the church in large numbers, but it's over. Do you actually know what is it that we celebrate when we celebrate the day of the Virgin of Guadalupe or why the date is important? If you don't, 
it's no big deal. Just kindly write the word virgin in a comment on its own, and I'll gladly elaborate after the weather. I was going to suggest that you write Guadalupe, but that might be a little bit more challenging. If you don't know the legend of the Virgin of Guadalupe, just write the word virgin, and I'll be happy to go at it later on in the broadcast. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about immigration. Um, I have received several requests or comments over the fact that some people out there are feeling a little edgy with some changes in immigration law here in Mexico and, uh, and how many days you can stay or you cannot stay. And we have pretty much decided to stay away from that conversation until or unless we see a headline about it because we believe that it is very important information and uh, information related to immigration just as information related to COVID should come from a professional, not from me. Um, so you, I can see that a lot of people want to know about the Virgin, duly noted, but here is your second, um, your second um, participation. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not gonna talk about immigration here unless we see it on a headline. If you want to take that just for, for what I said, that's fine. If you want to understand why it is that we do not talk about immigration here, kindly, just as you wrote Virgin, write immigration on its own, and I will be so happy to elaborate, although I might get a little ranty. That's just a forewarning, and I don't want to upset anybody, but there you have it. No immigration conversation here. Uh, let us turn over to the weather and take it from there, and after the weather, yes, we will talk about the Virgin of Guadalupe. <coughs> oh my God, I hope you didn't hear that cough. Ah, let's see. I only brought the sun out because I wanted your last day on earth to be a nice one. Well, that's nice to know, I suppose. It is 27 degrees. It feels like 28. Humidity is high again, 64%. Uh, Our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 80 degrees. And Sorry about that. The weather forecast for the beginning of, uh, of this week, I was saying, is it's going to be humid through the day with a high temperature of 30 and low temperature of 20. Coffee and headlines with Dave, you crack me up. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Hold on just a second. Don't get me distracted. Tuesday, tomorrow, it'll be used, uh, humid through the day with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 19. And Wednesday, it'll be humid again, high temperature of 30, low temperature of 18. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. What are we going to do here? Immigration. Why are we not talking about immigration here? Well, first of all, number one, it is information, talking about immigration is talking about information that is readily available elsewhere. I will let you know that I have been approached by, recently, by a nice gentleman who watches regularly and he was um, asking me, you know, why I'm, are we not talking about immigration here? And... Um, and I and and I explain myself, you know, that you know, it's, immigration is a sensitive subject, and it's only really the government and and lawyers that should be talking about it. And I asked him, is it that difficult for tourists? Oh, and this question came from someone that is already uh, here on on long term, and already has his 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 um, his card, his special identification to be here. So it's somebody that doesn't have the issue or the problem directly. And I asked this person, is it that difficult for tourists to obtain the clarity they seek by contacting the authorities directly or an immigration lawyer? Because apparently there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going on with immigration in Mexico, whether they let you in and they give you a permit that is... Um, these many days long or that many days long, et cetera, et cetera. And this gentleman answered to me, he said, many of these tourists don't speak Spanish 
and they're anxious to go to immigration and uh, and immigration may state one thing and do another and most don't want to hire a lawyer and I don't even know if this is happening in Puerto Vallarta so I mean it's interesting that the same gentleman that wanted me to clarify doesn't even know what's going on in our city the bottom line is twofold um, number one again immigration issues are specialized issues and I could spend a lot of time researching things that are not appearing on headlines but then the time I spend researching things like immigration takes away from the time that I spend, you know, walking around town or finding tacos or doing all these other things that have more to do with English speaking locals as you are and not tourists. And secondly, <clears throat> I'm sorry, friends, but as a Mexican national, I have to laugh and I have to wonder if you've ever gone through the nightmare that it takes someone like me to get a visa to go to the United States. You know, if I wanted to go to the United States on vacation today, I have to go to Guadalajara for starters because I cannot do it here. I have to set up an appointment in advance um, with the consulate and the date of the appointment may or may not have anything to do with what works well for my schedule. Um, you have to pay a small fortune to get the, 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 the visa, it, I think it's like 3,600 pesos, um, plus your expenses of going to Guadalajara City, plus the fact that you have to show up with all kinds of documentation, which includes that you have to show your bank statements, showing that you have enough money to not only afford the trip, but to buy a small house or two. And then you get to the consulate and you wait in line and you are interviewed by an immigration official who may or may not have had enough sex the night before and may or may not be in a good frame of mind, happy with his or her life or overall having a great disposition. And this person that interviews me will or will not give me a visa because you're not guaranteed one. And if you don't get the visa, you don't get your money back. So, to hear somebody say to me, oh, please give us more information because we're afraid to talk to the authorities. We don't speak your language and we need to know these things in advance. You know, give me a break. Again, I don't mean to throw shade on immigrants that are trying to come into Mexico, but you know, just, just get informed. Like the rest of the world needs to get informed when we have to go travel anywhere else. If we find headlines that have to do with immigration, of course, we will be so very glad to mention them if and when they relate to our uh, audience, which is English speaking locals. And enough about that. Uh, so there you have it. And thank you very much for your comment. Yes, for a Mexican national, getting a visa is a nightmare. Absolutely. Most are denied and they are grouchy. Absolutely. So when I hear from someone saying to me, Paco, please be, be, be nice, be kind to all these tourists that want to come here and don't want to lift a finger to be well informed and don't speak the language and don't do this and don't do that. I mean, seriously, stay home. <laughs> and now let's talk about the Virgin. <laughs> Our Lady of Guadalupe is a Marian apparition that is this is an instance in which the Blessed Virgin Mary, for us Catholics, um, made an appearance in Mexico. According to Mexican oral tradition and according to historic documents that are uh, stored at the Vatican, Mary, Mother of Jesus, appeared four times here in Mexico before a Chichimecan man named Juan Diego at a hill called Tepeyac. And this hill is just north of Mexico City, and we're talking 1531, so it, a while back. So Juan Diego is up on the hill minding his own business when she appears before him, and she says to Juan Diego, you know, go see Juan de Sumarraga, you know, Mexico's first bishop. Go see Juan de Sumarraga and ask him to build me a temple. And of course, you know, Juan Diego has just seen the Virgin appear before him, and he, you know, runs down to, to see Juan de Sumarra and, and relays the instructions that the Virgin 
uh, the Virgin requested. And of course, Bishop Sumarraga doesn't buy it. And he's like, yeah, right, whatever. And this happens two or three times. You know, Juan Diego goes back to the hill and says to the Virgin, uh, they're not buying it. And finally, um, finally, um, the Virgin says, okay, so if, if um, the Bishop needs some proof, you know, just gather some flowers in your cloak and take them to the bishop. So Juan Diego gathers some flowers, puts them in his cloak, goes back to the bishop and says, hey, this is what the virgin said. He drops the cloak and the flowers are now red roses and the cloak has the image of the virgin depicted on the cloak, miraculously. And this happened on December 12th, 1531. And that is the reason we celebrate the Virgin. And this cloak, which in reality is over two meters tall, so there's no way a Mexican average sized man would have been wearing this cloak to do anything practical, is depicted, the original cloak is uh, uh, is installed rather at, uh, at the church in Mexico City, the Basilica, the Basilica. And, and this is why Every December 12th, Mexico goes crazy with uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Millions of Mexican Catholics flock to see her either in Mexico City or in Talpa de Allende or here in Puerto Vallarta and many other churches, of course. So this is an important holiday and it's an important tradition and an important celebration. And it just occurs to me that we are going to add this to our list of you are not a Mexican, you're not an English speaking local, until you know the story of the Virgin of Guadalupe. Moving right along with a few other headlines that I have for you, I want to let you know that 336 years ago, this past Saturday, the British pirates Swan and Townley disembarked near Boca de Tomates, just north of Puerto Vallarta. And while they were attempting to dismember some nearby cows, they were quickly attacked by a mob of timeshare salespeople that made them run away. I'm kidding. They were attacked by Spanish soldiers and they ran away. Um, also, 170 years ago yesterday, what we know today as Puerto Vallarta was founded as Las Peñas de Santa Maria de Guadalupe. That was the original name of our town by a man named Guadalupe Sanchez Torres, who is to this date recognized as the founder of our city. Moving right along, Mayor Michel, our mayor, is convinced that the Malecon will look awesome and splendorous with our Christmas tree, our skating rink, and our little Christmas village where children and adults will be able to buy stuff. Did he say buy stuff? Yes, he did. And is there struggle going on with nearby merchants? Yes, there is. And what is going to happen? I don't know, but it'll be splendorous, or so says the mayor. A film festival that takes place concurrently in Puerto Vallarta and Montreal has started. It is called Cinema Diva, and it includes the screening of films from six different countries. We don't know much more about this film festival because like many film festivals and wine festivals and food festivals that happen here in Puerto Vallarta, they happen with enough notice that we can actually find out about them and you know I am being cynical. But of course, if you wanna learn more about this fine, this, this fine film festival, there is an official website that I will be sharing with you and uh, you can find out more whether there is something there that you wish to watch or not. Uh, two more before we get into our comments. Um, how drunk are we? According to a British agency called Global Drug Survey, Mexico doesn't drink as much as we think when compared with other countries. If you scroll down to this article, which was published yesterday, Australia seems to be the country that consumes the most alcohol, followed by Dinamarca, Denmark, I'm sorry, Finland, the United States, the UK, and a bunch of other countries. And we are not here until the very bottom of this list. So for all the tipsiness that you see out and about, you see we're not doing so bad. And last but not least, um, just because I know that I'm feeling a little bit anxious again about COVID with all the Omicron business, 
I found this article about how to deal with even more COVID uncertainty. This is, of course, in English, and of course, it comes from Vox, one of the favorite places we like to reference things. So here we go. Let us now scroll back and take a quick look at your comments and your suggestions and see where everybody is at today. Do -de -do -do -do. Lots of hellos, and thank you very much for that. Lots of good mornings. Uh, and yes, rest in peace, Don Vicente Fernandez. He was so much, so, so loved. Uh, and of course, his son, Alejandro Fernandez. Uh, there's more artists in the family, but it is Alejandro Fernandez who has pretty much catapulted in his career of, uh, of singing. But Vicente Fernandez is, is going to be missed very much so. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Good morning and welcome to Naval Hospital and where Dory and I are getting our third vaccines. boy. Good for you, Bill. I got a report that lines at La Lija are a little long, but, you know, it is what it is. Bring an umbrella. Bring your Kindle. Just get it done. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. Uh, another person waiting at the Naval Hospital. How kind of you guys to, like, chime in while you're waiting for your vaccine. I love it. I love it. Let's see what else. Do, 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 do. Yes, yes, Karen. Uh, Vicente Fernandez contributed a lot to Mexico and uh, to our culture and our music. Um, let's see what else. Yes, the U.S. news is also recognizing his passing. That's good to know. Uh, then your request for virgin information, and we talked about the virgin. Yay! <laughs> A questionable virgin, says uh, Julie. Well, yeah. Let's see what else. Oh, Linda is here from uh, north of the border. Welcome, Linda. I'm so glad you made it okay. And this is what made me laugh earlier. Coffee. And headlines that would be that would be my throat absolutely. Any updates on the number four bus to El Rio Barbecue? Um, I have no updates. I have no updates. I think the last time I went walking, I saw a bus go by, but I'm not sure if anybody is living in that neighborhood and can talk to us about whether the buses are running or not. It would be most appreciated. I am hoping to get to. Uh, Moro Paraiso before the end of the year to say hello to my friends over there. But uh, Randy, I hope you get the clarity you look for. Uh, tourists can go to their own embassy in Mexico website. Well, I know that, Mi Mihal. I don't understand uh, the reluctance. I really don't. Um, U.S. immigration is way worse. That same for Mexico. Scheduling communication and timing on both sides are bad. But the U.S. border cl uh, closing recently was way worse, Paco. Much of what you say is similar for those going to Mexican consulates in the U.S. from friends who have successfully gained permanent, permanently residency. So I think it may be an immigration agent disposition globally. Well, yeah. Still, it's something, it's a, it's a topic that we don't know. And we live here, so we're not too worried about that, are we? Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, great. Hold on just a second. My mouse is running out of batteries. Let's see what else. Da -de -da -de -da -da. <laughs> Most U.S. citizens have no clue. I have a friend who met all qualifications in a 10-year visa. She had her whole life and was denied. Well, I don't know about most citizens, most U.S. citizens not having a clue because, you know, I don't represent all those people. But um, it is what it is. Let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. Oh, Rita, the, the, the relationship between Aztec goddess Cuatlicue and the Virgin is also very interesting. Uh, there's so much... It's a fascinating topic because the way Catholic tradition became intertwined with Aztec pre-Hispanic beliefs, um, it's it's just it's fascinating. It's fascinating. We could we could talk about this for a long time. 
Julie asks, are there any places to sit down at the Naval Hospital while waiting for the booster? Great question. If anybody is out there and can report on this, uh, please let us know. Mark wants to know, how are the lines at the Naval Hospital? We go tomorrow for our boosters. Um, Janet says, lines are very long, but we don't know exactly where. I hope... Uh, I hope you I hope you guys are getting the feedback that you're looking for. I mean, sooner or later, I'm going to get my booster shot and I'm going to go through all of this. Um, Mark says, uh, oh, Bill says that they got there at eight o'clock and just finally got their shots at 1030. And I believe uh, Bill and, and his wife were at the Naval Hospital. So so there you have it. Today was um, today was the first day. And there's two more days to do this, tomorrow and Wednesday. So, um, again, be grateful that we're getting these booster shots. Come with a book. Come with a stool to sit on if you need that. Come with an umbrella. Come with whatever it is that you need and, and just get it done. It is so important. And this, my friends, is what we have for today. Um, again, regarding the issue about immigration, we don't mean to ruffle any feathers, um, just as I don't uh, walk into La Comet expecting to find uh, pickup trucks on aisle four. Please don't come to Coffee and Headlines expecting to find immigration tips for tourists. It's just not something we offer. We never have, and we probably will not have in the future unless or until you as a community make it a priority because we always keep our ears open for what is important to you as English speaking locals. Have a great week and uh, hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. Ciao.